The likes of deep sea divers are always finding curious oddities lingering in the depths of the ocean. And while history experts often swoop in and explain what's been found, sometimes they just can't, no matter how hard they try. These are 20 underwater discoveries that cannot be explained. Number 20. Ferrari 2000 Sometimes people are quite poorly and they do things that make no sense at all. And for some reason, newspapers and such see fit to report these mental breakdowns with relish. One such event was this unfortunate incident in which a man drove a Ferrari 2000 off a dockside in Palm Beach and straight into the water. He survived the dramatic event, but his first words following the crash were kind of incoherent. And then the statement that he made later to the police was just as confused sounding as well. This was apparently not drug or alcohol related, as many people had suspected at the time. No, it was just a man having a very difficult time while being behind the wheel of a very fast and expensive car. I want to see them open the door and fish come flying out of the door like... Fortunately for the driver, there was a quick thinking and selfless individual in the immediate vicinity when the car went into the water and they just jumped straight in to rescue him. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. Deep sea divers and explorers find skeletons loitering in the depths of the ocean on a regular basis because of course they do. I hate to break it to you, but people do drown. What's less common is those skeletons being staged to look like they're at a little tea party. This creepy sight was stumbled upon by a man diving in a river in the United States. One of the skeletons was even wearing sunglasses. As always, comment down below using the hashtag sweet topic and let me know your thoughts in relation to what I just showed you on the screen. Number 19. SS Thistlegorm the British merchant navy ship, the SS Thistlegorm, was built in 1940 and then within a year was sunk by German bombers during the Second World War. The vessel went down near Gas Muhammad in the Red Sea on October 6th of 1941. The wreckage remained undiscovered for a few years until famous French oceanographer and filmmaker Jacques Cousteau rediscovered the shipwreck in the early 1950s. Cousteau had done some research in the area and gathered information from local fishermen, which would then lead to the discovery of the shipwreck. During dives to the wreck, Cousteau and his team recovered several items, which included a motorcycle, the ship's bell, and the captain's safe. They also took a lot of photographs, which were featured in National Geographic magazine in February of 1956, where they showed the interior of the shipwreck and documented the contents. The SS Thistlegrum was carrying a cargo of vehicles, which included trucks and armored cars, and it also contained guns, ammunition, radio equipment, and aircraft parts. Most of the gear was actually headed to support Allied troops in Egypt when the ship was sank. Number 18. Baltic Sea Anomaly uh-oh, something circular and mysterious. It must be aliens. Always with the aliens and the circular oddities. I mean, really though, why is it that when anything circular or indeed symmetrical turns up unexpectedly, do we all instantly assume that it's aliens? Why would aliens be so into round things anyway? That is at least as big a mystery as anything else we've been wondering at so far. The so-called Baltic Sea Anomaly, there's a catchy name if I've ever heard one, is a geographical feature that's only actually visible on some fairly indistinct sonar images that were taken by a Swedish diving team in 2011. They were out there in the northern Baltic Sea doing some treasure hunting, and when they reviewed the images, they concluded that what they had seen down there was an unusual object that they thought might have a non-natural origin. The tabloid 
Lloyds, never shy of a potential alien's headline, had a field day with intense speculation about it being a sunken UFO, but of course, there's no way that it might be what scientists have said. You know, a boring old geological formation? Oh, well, or maybe a big round rock. What do you think's going on there? Is it a clue to extraterrestrial life? Or is it something much more pedestrian? Go on and get stuck in the comments section below. I dare you. Number 17. Mysterious underwater Stonehenge has been found underneath Lake Michigan. Well, isn't this exciting? Not to mention really rather weird, and whether it can be explained or not, that remains to be seen. Archaeologists were busy scanning the vast underneath of the waters of Lake Michigan looking for shipwrecks, but they would come across something distinctly unusual and much, much older. While using remote sensing techniques in the Grand Traverse Bay area of Lake Michigan, at about 40 feet below the surface they would discover a big boulder with a prehistoric carving that appears to depict a mastodon. which is generally a woolly mammoth. And then nearby to that, exciting discovery, they found a series of stones that had seemingly been arranged in a kind of Stonehenge style. This bunch of old prehistoric rocks was nestled in amongst the regular old detritus of the lake. You know, the old cars and wrecks and a randomly Civil War era pier. But there, hiding in this wreckage, was an archeological gem. Apparently, Tell me if I'm wrong, and yes, I know it's underwater, but this is lacking some of Stonehenge's enormous and imposing swagger, right? I mean, how big is it even? I expect a little more from my prehistoric monoliths. Number 16. Bimini Road Although there may be no known explanation for this underwater discovery, it seems to most of the people that have ever dived there that the so-called Bimini Road is the work of humans at some point in history. Just when it was made, or indeed why it was constructed, are things that may never be answered. But do you even actually care? Or is this particular mystery the preserve of rock botherers and Bimini diving instructors? The Bimini Road is an underwater arrangement of rocks which is located near North Bimini in the Bahamas. Its half a mile long structure is apparently built from rectangular-ish blocks of limestone. It sits about 18 feet beneath the surface and doesn't really appear to have any other obvious human built sorts of things in its immediate vicinity, so it is a strange one. And when the random rock was first discovered by divers in 1968, it had everyone scratching their noggins in puzzlement. But since then, not a whole lot's changed. They all seem to continue to mill around, being entirely confused by the whole thing. Poor souls. It's a tricky one to work out. Don't strain yourselves now, will you? Number 15. Lion City, China's Atlantis. It seems as though every country on Earth has its own Atlantis, or some imitation of this mythical city that's taken by the sea, but do they really stand up to the imagined scale and status of the legendary lost city itself? Here we have China's contender for best city swallowed by the sea, or in this case, by a government project which involved a good deal of flooding to create a hydroelectric dam. This is Lion City. And it's actually just a fraction of the area that would be flooded in 1959 when the power station was built. And a man-made lake was then needed. It was just tough luck that the lake had to go right on top of more than 1,300 villages across tens of thousands of acres of land, forcing the relocation of 290,000 people. Damn, that is some rude behavior right there. I mean, China is kind of enormous. Did they really have to put their flood on that particular spot? When you realize that it wasn't just those villages, but also an ancient city, a hugely important historic site known as Lion City, that also disappeared beneath the water. The submerged city was then forgotten until 2001 when it was rediscovered, and it had been enormous during its heyday. The remains beneath the water are extremely well preserved. There are temples and arches and roads and houses, and all 130 feet below the lake surface. It's kind of incredible and really very beautiful. Number 14. 
Julia, unexplained scary sound from the ocean. This is one of the things on my list that's truly mysterious and has had all the most clever science people's brains getting a sweat trying to figure out what the actual heck it is or was. It also helps that the thing has been given a name. That always gives stuff a sci-fi movie vibe. On March 1st of 1999, the United States National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, also known as NOAA, recorded an extremely loud noise in the ocean. The sound was so incredibly loud that it could be heard across the entire equatorial Pacific Ocean, traveling for over 3,000 miles, lasting around 15 minutes. The sound, like a wailing, moaning, monstrous creature, so inspired the imaginations of scientists at NOAA that they gave it a name, Julia. Nothing weird about that at all, is there? The thing is, though, however, that despite the underwhelming name, these people couldn't exactly identify what had caused such a massive sound that could travel across the globe like that. There were a few theories, of course, but in the end, the official story was that Julia was actually the sound of an extremely large iceberg running aground off Antarctica. A likely story. Oh, and there's also a rumor that NASA has some crazy footage with a suspiciously large shadow from the same time and area, but shh, don't tell anyone. Let's all get our thinking caps on, or even our tinfoil hats. Whatever works. Get some theories off our chests down in the comments section below. Go on, you know you want to. Go wild with it. Number 13. Shark Statue in Lake Neshudal just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water, some joker chucks a shark statue in there and before you know it, you're back in therapy. Oh, that is such a funny and hilarious prank, isn't it? A bloodthirsty shark waiting beneath the surface to scare you, quite possibly to actual death. And I thought Switzerland was supposed to be such a sensible place, you know, full of cuckoo clocks and chocolate and yodeling, but it might just finish off anyone with a nervous disposition. This lake in Switzerland has been giving people a rather rude surprise in the murky depths. Someone with a wicked sense of humor has been mucking about with an especially toothsome shark statue which looms and leers from deep below the surface. If you're a little on the more nervous side or you may suffer from a heart complaint, this could actually finish you off. So beware, in the water, it's just someone's idea of a rubbish joke. Or could it be the glint of an errant great white smile, grinning as it opens its jaws to devour you all? Number 12. Skulls Found in Evil Maya Sinkhole as if a big scary sinkhole isn't enough to give you the Wiggins, then how about one that is also cursed and contains a collection of skulls as well? How delightful! In an area just to the south of the Mexican town of something I'm not about to try and pronounce, there's an ancient Mayan city called Mayapan. In this city, if you're extra brave or really very reckless indeed, you can find a dirty great big sinkhole that's not only a dangerous hole in the Earth, but it's also believed to have been an entrance to the underworld. So that sounds right like a barrel of laughs now, doesn't it? A team of divers scaled the 65 feet drop, very carefully I should imagine, and somewhat gingerly began to explore the cursed gateway to the underworld. Seriously, how did they choose the victims to be plunged into this very portal to hell? There couldn't have been many volunteers for this unenviable task, that's for sure. This place is so feared that locals actually avoid it, and they don't even allow their children to play anywhere near it, nor will they gather drinking water from it. Beliefs abound that there are evil forces in there. So once the team of divers had managed to wrangle themselves and their gear down into the hole, they could finally dive and discover what secrets were hiding inside of the evil thing. What they found were underwater caverns, which were, very creepily, mainly full of human remains. It's thought that the hole was used as a burial ground, but you know, if this was a portal to the afterlife, perhaps slinging the freshly departed down into it was an attempt to get them on their way a bit faster. Oh, how jolly. Number 11. Hidden Underwater River Flows Along Mexico's Ocean Floor 
This extraordinary and unique place has such an ethereal beauty about it, and it just doesn't make any sense. How can there be an underwater river? Just the notion of it is a head scratcher. This place does indeed exist though, and it is very stunning, if a little tricky to access. Located in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, the secret underwater river known as Cenote Angelita can be found about 15 minutes drive south of Tulum. The way this thing works is apparently a sciency thing that involves a thin layer of hydrogen sulfate that separates the salt water from the fresh water. This is how the river maintains its own flow and form and gives the whole scene a spooky, surreal feeling. This particular river also has proper riverbanks with trees and plants growing alongside, so it really appears like a river that has somehow been submerged beneath the ocean. Number 10. Atlet Yam Oh goody, another underwater Neolithic place with an alleged stone circle. My favorite! This time we're in Israel, in the waters of the eastern Mediterranean Sea just off the coast of Atlet. The ancient submerged village of Atlet Yam is believed to be between 8900 and 8300 years old, spreading across a whole 10 acres of submarine real estate. This is a site of huge archaeological significance, as it's believed to provide some evidence of the earliest known agropastoral substance living systems on the coast here. There have been plenty of useful discoveries which have given archaeologists a lot to work with. They've discovered houses, a water well, human skeletons, and animal bones, as well as a stone semicircle that's made up of seven megaliths each, weighing around 1,300 pounds. Archaeological studies of the site at Atlet Yam and its contents have suggested the whole place was abandoned in a hurry and was likely inundated with water as the sea levels rose after the end of the Ice Age. There's some evidence to suggest that an eruption from Mount Etna on Sicily during the same time period may have caused a massive tsunami that would have inflicted huge damage on the coastal settlements of the Mediterranean, so it's all a bit mysterious in that we don't know a colossal amount about humanity so very long ago, but equally, there's a bunch of evidence that's available for experts to piece together some exciting sounding stories in order to satisfy at least a little bit of our curiosity. Number 9. Avlopetri Avlopetri is the world's oldest submerged city and has been examined and poked and prodded more than any other undersea archaeological sites anywhere else on Earth. But given its position, just off the coast of Greece in the warm and clear waters of the Mediterranean, it's not as if they would be short on volunteers to work on the site, is it? Diving in the shallow Greek seas in the sunshine? Oh yes, please. The remarkable underwater city of Pavlopetri has been mapped completely with all the scientific gubbins that are available to the archaeology team today. It's shown the Bronze Age city that had been occupied from the 3rd millennium until 1100 BC, and there are only traces of its remains left now, but the technology that's being used has allowed archaeologists to digitally rebuild the city using the bits of buildings, courtyards, streets, and burial places to reconstruct a plan of how the city may have appeared, and therefore how people might have lived there all those thousands of years ago. Perhaps this is one underwater discovery that's been explained, at least with everything that's available to people up until today, and since it has captured so many imaginations, no doubt the secrets of Pavlopetri will continue to be revealed for many years to come. Number 8. Vampire Squid from sunken cities and lost civilizations to sea-dwelling creepsters that'll give you nightmares, we really love to spoil you here at the Fancy Banana, don't we? The Vampire Squid is, despite its name, apparently neither a squid nor an octopus, and presumably it's not actually a vampire either, but I should probably just make sure. The Vampire Squid is a kind of small cephalopod, living in tropical and temperate waters around the world at depths that range between 2,000 
2,000 to 3,000 feet at temperatures of around 2 to 3 degrees Celsius. Brrr, that's between 35 and a half degrees and 37 and a half degrees Fahrenheit. These unique animals are completely different from any other species and are regrettably considered to be endangered on the account of the pollution and destruction of their habitats. And so you can probably see why they're called vampire squid. They're black or red colored and have weird webbed skin that have the appearance of a vampire cape and they also have some extremely spooky red eyes. They don't change their body color or even release ink when threatened like other squid, but they do eject a glowing sticky mucus that acts in a similar way, confusing would-be predators. It doesn't seem as though they go around sucking blood and they're not exactly plagued by that pesky affliction of immortality either. Number 7. Molinere Underwater Sculpture Park now apparently one of the best ways to make sculptures of people more creepy is to chuck them into the sea. Or at least that's the general effect with this underwater sculpture park at Molinere Bay in Granada in the Caribbean. Created by Jason DeClaire Taylor, this underwater garden features a whole bunch of human figures in various poses and groupings, as well as the classic outstretched armed Jesus. There are 75 sculptures in total, and they go over an area of about 8,600 square feet down there under the water. They're positioned in amongst the natural rock formations and sandy patches at depths of between 16 to 26 feet below sea level. So how do you visit this gallery exactly? Well, you'll have to don some diving gear and get down there, or take a tour on a glass bottom boat and no doubt fork out a pretty penny for the privilege. But that's how it goes now, isn't it? If you like your sculpture extra gnarly with stuff growing on it and general saltwater erosion, then this is right up your alley. And apparently it's so highly thought of that National Geographic has even named it amongst their top 25 wonders of the world, if you can credit it. Number 6. Train Graveyard Underwater the spooky sight of two lost locomotives in the water about five miles off the coast of New Jersey has given local history people a new mystery to ponder. Just how this patch of sea became the final resting place for a couple of trains from the 1850s is quite the head scratcher. There are a couple of theories though. Either the two steam trains were being transported when they accidentally ditched into the sea, or they were deliberately pushed into the water perhaps to prevent the vessel transporting them from sinking or capsizing. There was certainly never any railway all the way out at sea. The locomotives are well preserved as they sit 90 feet below the surface. They've sustained a lot of rust, which you would expect after 160 years sitting deep underwater, but their forms remain and they're still of interest as examples of steam engines of this era. Oddly, they're also both alongside one another on the seabed, sat upright as if they've pulled into a station together. Number 5. The Antikythera Mechanism well, this is interesting. Who knew that they had computers in ancient times? That's what archaeologists are calling this unusual object that they discovered beneath the surface. A trading ship sank off the coast of the island of Antikythera in the Mediterranean Sea during the first half of the first century BC, and the wreck has proven to be a site of such enormous archaeological significance that it's revealed its secrets over the years. One such revelation was that of a mechanism that belies all previous understanding of how such an advanced use of geared mechanisms actually was during the time. Until the discovery of the Antikythera mechanism, there had been no such discovery of any engineering that involved gears. In fact, it's not believed to have been in use until medieval cathedral clocks were built over a thousand years later. The mechanical device is believed to have been used for calculating and displaying information about astronomical phenomena. Back in ancient Greece, this was obviously cutting-edge technology and is actually surprisingly sophisticated. It's even been scanned and the resulting radiographic imagery shows that there are 30 gear wheels that form part of the internal mechanism of the machine. So this may be difficult to explain in some respects, but only because historians had not yet discovered the true extent of the knowledge and skills of ancient people. It may add as much a mystery to this matter as it explains though as well. 
Number four, Orta Cave. Squeezing through teeny weeny gaps in full diving gear may not be everyone's idea of fun, especially not in a super deep and dark filled cave system in the remote Ural mountain region of Russia. Now to be honest, it sounds a bit like a claustrophobic nightmare, but hey, that's just me. Perhaps you're an underwater cave enthusiast and this place looks like your idea of a fun day out. It does take all sorts now, doesn't it? So here we are in the world's largest gym gypsum cave. It is big, it stretches over three miles underwater, and has a lot of caves and tunnels. This place is quite distinct on the account of the unusual rock formations and the simple fact that it's unlike anywhere else on Earth. Gypsum is a soft sulfate mineral that is made up of calcium sulfate dehydrate, and if you're interested in such fascinating facts, there you go. The only thing is that if it's ingested by humans, gypsum's not exactly a healthful thing. It can cause blockages in the gastrointestinal tract. If handled improperly, it can also cause skin irritation and damage to your eyeballs, your mucous membranes, and even give you breathing problems. So as well as the inherent dangers of underwater cave diving, like drowning or running out of oxygen or even getting lost in a complex cave system, this crazy cave is also trying to kill you in a variety of other more imaginative ways. What a fun one. Number 3. Yonaguni Monument it's kind of surprising just how many cities in history have fallen foul of the unpredictable waterline, finding themselves submerged in the rising waters of the sea. It seems as though every country has one. And this is Japan's. There's a submerged ancient city in the waters just off of Yonaguni Yima in Japan. It's believed that this city was submerged about 2,000 years ago when an earthquake struck the area and sunk the city. A marine geologist named Masaki Kimura has been methodically measuring and documenting the ancient remains for over 15 years and has been deepening his understanding of the site. He now believes that the city is 5,000 years old containing numerous structures, which are, he believes, proof of the civilization that once lived there. But apparently not everyone in the marine archaeology community is inclined to believe that this was the case. Some have even put forward theories that this was an entirely natural structure, having no evidence that humans had any intervention in building it. So there are two rather opposing views and a whole boatload of controversy. That's what makes a more juicy Lost City story anyways, isn't it? What do you think? Is it a city or a naturally formed phenomenon? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Number 2. The Ghost Fleet of Truk Lagoon all over the world, there are wrecks and remains of ships and such that have found their way to the bottom of oceans, lakes, and rivers throughout history. A veritable pile of trash in a lot of our most beautiful places. We humans are always going around leaving ships all over the place. It seems that we've been doing it for all of time. But one of the eras in which humans most liberally dumped their boat-based garbage into the oceans was that of World War II. Ships were being torpedoed and sunk all over the show. From the Pacific Ocean to the Red Sea, there are remnants of that terrible conflict. Here we have a literal fleet of ships that has been left to sleep with the fishes on the bottom of the Truk Lagoon in Micronesia. There are literally hundreds of wrecks in this tiny area of the sea. During the Second World War, this lagoon was where Japan kept a lot of its imperial fleet, so when the Allied forces figured it out and rained down on the ships with Operation Hailstone, most of that same fleet would find its way rather rapidly to the bottom of the sea. And there it remains, slowly being re claimed by the natural world beneath the waves. These days, it's one of the largest World War II dive sites on Earth, and that one raid alone would sink 50 ships and more than 250 aircraft. It did lay undisturbed until the 1960s, when Jacques Cousteau investigated the site and brought renewed interest to the area. Although some of the hundreds of bodies have been recovered and returned to Japan for burial, some still remain trapped in those wrecks. Very creepy indeed. Number 1. 60,000 Ton Anomaly Beneath the Sea of Galilee 
Ah, excellent. Another of these mysterious anomalies. I'm beginning to grow fond of these things, aren't you? Let's just hope that this one doesn't turn out to be another big old heap of rocks. In 2003, a sonar survey of the southwest part of the Sea of Galilee, the largest freshwater lake in Israel, would reveal some unusually large boulders which appeared to be arranged as a kind of monument beneath the water. Each boulder is estimated to weigh around 60,000 tons and is around 33 feet tall, the whole arrangement stretches to a diameter of around 230 feet. It is weird, but scientists have concluded that it is man-made since it does not resemble any kind of natural structure. They also concede that the stone monument must have been the work of a well-organized society, but that is really all they're able to conclude. The mystery does deepen. What do you think? aliens perchance? Go on and have a hypothesis in the old comments section. Come on, it'll be fun. Well, there do appear to be a rather lot of underwater mysteries out there, don't there? I find this all a little bit disconcerting, especially that Julia, she seemed to be a bit too loud to be a boring old iceberg. What do you think of all this unexplained, submerged stuff? And which of these discoveries has tickled your imagination? As always, let me know all about it in the comments below. Also, be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.